Hello and welcome to the continuing adventures of Klaus von Schnob. Today we are going to bomb yet another German airfield. And it's once again late at night, so fun night raid. I've turned the gamma correction up as high as it'll go, so hopefully you can see as much as possible. I'll come back on the other side of the loading screen. Alright, so once again we're taking a gigantic, unnecessarily long route to the target. And going way the heck up north before swinging south. I have no idea why we're doing this, but perhaps it's to be all deceptive. Anyway, because we're attacking an airfield, I don't think the Davis gun is going to be particularly useful, but we will be taking a double Lewis. And we will be bringing... actually, let's try the 1650 pounder, because last time we tried to drop one of those on an airfield, a horrible, horrible dream sequence happened. Is how I'm dismissing that now. Um, <laughs> but we're just going to continue using the default paint scheme. I'm working on making one of my own, though. It'll be like City of Calgary and stuff like that. Because I live there, if you didn't know that. Anyway, let's start. Hopefully this time, unlike last time, we won't break one of the King's airplanes. Yeah, someone commented on the last one and let me know that it was indeed the King during World War One. It was George, either the... Fifth, yeah, it was George the Fifth. Uh, yeah, it was George the Fifth. Okay, but yeah, we broke one of the King's airplanes, and I'm sure he wasn't amused. He probably didn't even know about it, but you know, actually, no, we won't bother leaning out the mixture until we're on the takeoff roll. But that will be very soon. And next time, if someone starts firing off white flares while we're landing, I'll know exactly what's going on. Alright, I don't know if this guy's going to take off, so I'm just going to go, you know what? Deal with it. And just very quickly lean out the mixture, and then start looking forwards, which tends to be a really good idea on takeoff. And try not to go through one of those fires. And also turn the icons off, because I don't want to use them. Because this is night bombing... Kind of. There's still a little bit of daylight left, but there certainly won't be by the time we're over the target, or indeed by the time we're landing. And as I promised in the comments of the last one, I'll be using the bomb site this time, because I learned how to use it. So, and we're going to try and bomb from pretty high altitude. Because again, I got another comment from one person saying I should either come in really low or really high. Except for really low, they said below treetop height. I'm thinking, not sure how safe it is to fly below treetop height, because I'm, that seems to imply within the trees, but you were going to be going with high altitude. We'll probably just go with the regular altitude that we come in at with the formation, because usually we don't get too much flak up there, and then, you know, there's strength in numbers and all that, so I'll come back if something interesting happens or when we're over the target, which is pretty likely because not very much interesting ever happens until we're over the target. Blah, 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 bye. Okay, we're over the lines and getting pretty close to the target, so we should probably start setting up the bomb site. So our altitude is 5,000 feet. So we'll set that in 5,000 feet. Airspeed is just a hair under 80. We'll go with 79. And with the briefing, no, let's map with the briefing, we can get the weather report. Uh, wind at ground level. East at 2 meters per second. So, coming from the east, so that would be... Um, okay, so we need to set... Okay, there we go. At 2 meters per second. That's not going to affect our bombs very much. As you can see, if I move it, it just... <coughs> offsets it by a fairly small distance, but... East 2 meters per second, so that'll mean... I believe that's supposed to mean it's from the east and blowing uh, to the west, so 270. So now the bomb site's set up, we just need to navigate to the target, which is probably where those spotlights are coming from. But uh, we can have a look at the map for that. And you can see that gigantic bomb slung underneath the fuselage that we are going to be going and dropping on it, so we are just... I'm using the level autopilot here, which is what you would do when using the bomb site anyway, to get very precisely to the target. Oh, looks like my comrades ahead of us have already hit it, but we'll throw our 
bomb into the mix. Oh yeah, you can see it down there is where the lights are coming from. Okay, so we'll just bring it further over to the right. You can press Shift X or Shift Z to turn right or left respectively with the level autopilot. Or if you're in the bomb site, you can use the lever thing. So it looks like we're reasonably lined up, but let's go to the bomb site to get super lined up. So we are carrying that one really gigantic bomb. We're just going to drop it somewhere reasonably central. And it should do a lot of damage, because it's the sort of thing where you can drop it just generally near your target, and it'll absolutely obliterate it. Because by World War One standard, it's a bloody weapon of mass destruction, seeing it uh, it's being dropped from a plane. So we're getting the lights now, and the road. So that means the target should be coming into view any second now. So we are just going to bring it a little bit over to the right. And... Okay, what do we got? Okay, we've got some buildings coming into view. I'll bring it over to the left. And we are just going to drop it right around here. Uh, we'll just double check altitude and speed really quickly. 5,000 feet, 80 miles an hour. 80 miles an hour. 5,000 feet. And wind speed and direction are all good. And we are just waiting on the target now. Alright, so in just a second... Bombs away! And they're bringing the spotlights to bear on us, so let's start turning. So, but I'm only going to turn a little bit, and then we're going to have a look at that bomb and watch it plunge earthwards. And it looks like we sort of just dropped it right in the middle of an already heavily damaged area. And it looks like the wind might have blown it off course a bit. I might have uh, done those calculations wrong, but... Boom! Okay, I thought it was a dud for a second, but then I realized that bomb has a really long fuse. Because if you drop it from really low, uh, one tends to have some problems. So we are now going to be making our egress, heading back across the lines and home in time for tea if your tea time is particularly late so and I can already see the formation and uh, I'll let you know if anything interesting happens and if not I'll see you when we're landing alright I think we might have a problem because they just uh, got us with the spotlights again and I'm seeing flak bursts below us so hopefully we'll be over the lines before they can zero in I'm really thinking that we ought to come in higher in the future on the other hand, you can only come in so high, like, I don't think this operates very well above about 4,000 meters has been my experience in testing it. But, uh, I guess we'll see how it goes. We're flying over the German trenches now, and we'll be over no man's land in a second, so... I think we're gonna be okay. But, uh, if I suddenly cut to us falling from the sky with no wings, uh, you know exactly what happened. We're fine, don't worry. Yeah, sorry, this one's been a bit boring, so I thought I'd uh, lighten up your evening. Well, it's evening in Rise of Flight. I don't know when you're watching this. It's probably going to be uploaded in the evening. It's being recorded, and it's 8 p.m., but... Okay, now I'm just waffling. Goodbye! Ah, uh, and the landing lights... Well, lights... Are within our view... Uh, we'll just get the radiator where it needs to be and all the mixture leaned out. So we're getting white flares, so I think there's uh, traffic on the field at the moment. So we're just going to hover, well not hover, but circle around until the opportunity to land arises. And then we might be coming in over the building so that we don't need to worry about hitting them. Or indeed uh, <coughs> anything else. But uh, I was noticing looking at the map that I, I know the airfield's really far away from the lines, but looking at this map, it's really far away from the lines. But I guess with the uh, bombers operating out of them, then I guess they have more range, so they're the ones best suited to being that far behind the lines. Let's just have a good look at the field. Okay, there's definitely nothing on it, and we're not getting any flares. So if we don't get any flares, we're going to land. But I guess the further away the further away you are from the lines, the less noise there is, more opportunity for dastardly skullduggery and goodly pooping. Oh, oh dear, maybe not. But uh, definitely plenty of opportunities for happy landings, and uh, 
plenty of white flares, but I don't see anything. But we're going to go around and come in the other way because I don't see anything. Because I'm assuming that means there's something I haven't seen based on what the white flares meant last time. If that means anything. Ooh, and there's a lovely town nearby where there are lots of opportunities for stuff. There's definitely nothing on the field, so we'll just see how this goes. And I'm going to close the map because I know where we are. So we're just going to get our speed down because right now we're doing about 90 miles an hour. And then we'll just turn around and land. I don't want to make the turn going too slowly because we might spin in. But the great thing about World War One aircraft is they are remarkably survivable. And for those of you who have played Kerbal Space Program, you know that they are survivable because of their innovative crumple zone technology. Unfortunately, our nose gunner is part of the crumple zone, so... But we are going to side slip because the wings are also a crumple zone if we go sideways. But because there's so much... Oh, yeah, there's one plane landing ahead of us, so we're going to see what he's going to do. We're probably going to have to go around. Depending what he does. Uh, yeah, we're going to go around. Okay, once more in a big circle. The great thing about the Handley page is it's a lot easier to fly than the Gotha. Whereas with the Gotha, it feels like you're kind of doing a balancing act. Whereas with this, you feel like, well, you'd never sideslip in the Gotha or make, like, 45-degree turns like this one. With this, you can kind of throw it around a bit more, which is surprising, because it's a decent amount bigger. But I'm considering in the future, if I do another bomber campaign, it'll definitely be in the Gotha. Well, it's it's the only other heavy bomber, unless I start unless I do the campaign in Ilya Moromets, which I might do, because I do have that. If you don't know what it is... The simulation of the Sikorsky S-22, better known as the Ilya Moromets, and it was a Russian World War One four-engine heavy bomber. And there's another plane landing, so we're going to go around once again. But there were only three of us, so I'm thinking we're probably going to be okay for the third go. But I might do the campaign in that at some point, if anyone should be interested in it. But uh, I would do that probably in place of a Rise of Light campaign. Uh, just because I like to have probably one IL-2 Stormovic, one Rise of Flight, and one Silent Hunter 3, and possibly something else, maybe DCS, or something completely different. I've looked at it, maybe even Far Cry 2, but... Anyway, I think we're going to be landing. Those are ideas. I have no intention of dying in this campaign. I would really like to take it to the end of the war. Um, James Phillips has been given a second chance, and I don't want to squander it. Which is why I want to make him as safe as possible and bomb from really high altitudes. But I might try coming in really, really low sometime just to uh, appease those who said I should do that. And we got another white flare, but I'm going to ignore it because I think we got here first. Okie dokie. And touchdown. And I know this thing stops pretty quickly, but we'll just hold the stick all the way back because that's what you're supposed to do, apparently. It's not just what I do. And we'll bring up the throttle for the left engine and make a nice big right turn and try not to uh, run over any of the fires and taxi back into the hangars. Except this plane wouldn't fit into any of those hangars so I'm beginning to question their existence but there might be other units based here, I don't know. It would be, there. Uh, as I discussed before, there are benefits and drawbacks to being this far away from the lines. And also we've been bombing the same German airfield that's really close to the lines for a long time. And I believe that's uh, either Schuster 27B or Schlaster 27B. Either case, a German two-seater unit. At this point, they have either DFWs or Halberstadts. I know that was one thing that they tended to use the 0400 for, was to hit German airfields and try to knock out various squadrons. I know whenever they could fi figure out where uh, Yasta 11 was, they would really try to knock it out at night, because for the most part, the Germans didn't... Uh, fly at night too much, although I did see some <coughs> other planes way off in the distance this time that might have been German that were heading around, but uh, anyway, I'm going to shut down the engines and we're back home, and I'm probably going to head into town for a bit of tea before going to snooze. Anyway, let's uh, finish the flight. And this time we didn't collide with anything, we, we brought our plane back home safely, and uh, uh, this is the fourth episode, and that's only the second time we've done that, so 
That's nice. Oh, we destroyed one plane, I'm guessing, on the ground. And nothing else. Although, well, because we dropped our bomb in the middle of a bunch of buildings that were already destroyed, so... I guess that does some good. Anyway, we'll see, uh... What's going on. We only have missions every couple of days in this, usually, as you can see up here. But, uh, James Phillips destroyed Heinrich von Trotz in his Fokker D7, so that must have been on the ground. Unless he, uh, snuck up behind us and my... <laughs> my gunner shot him down and I didn't even notice because I was in time compression eating chicken and watching mash but yeah that's what I do by the way when we're on the really long trips back and forth from the lines I watch mash but uh, our airfield bombardment is complete let's see what's uh, happening on the next day well next night most likely daylight bombing seems fairly rare but we shall see once it loads a new day so yeah once again another night mission we're going to bomb a railway station and uh, that will be in, so that'll be the next mission in the next episode. Until then, toodles, or toodaloo, or whatever you are accustomed to hearing me say, toodaloo!